Hey guys, I'm Naya and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I decided we're going to be talking about cards you probably should be picking up before Tiri Shizu gets hit. Now, why I say that? Inevitably, when the deck gets hit, a couple of engines and decks are going to rise in popularity because they won't be oppressed by Tiri Shizu, by their shufflers, by bestials, by all of that. And when they're not going to be oppressed anymore, they're probably going to rise in price as well. So you might invest in a couple of these things before the deck gets hit so you're ready for the next format that's going to follow after Tiri Shizu. Now we don't know when the badness is going to happen but it's better to be safe and um, just have those decks on hand. And before we get started I also want to shout out my Patreon. Tomorrow I'm dropping a new video for the first and second tier so if you want to support me you can always check the link in the description below. So the first engine we're going to be talking about is Runic. Now Runic to me just seems insane. It's very very splashable and it just it reminds me of Sky Striker a lot. It just does a lot of things that you're able to utilize as like a backbone to a strategy you might be using. Now, at this current point in time, the best example is Naturia Ishizu together with Runic. And Runic is a bit more expensive, but if you look at the prices, Runic Tip being one of the most expensive cards, I think it's the most expensive in the archetype, was um, at a steady price and then it started to go up again because people realized like the engine is insane and you just want to have it. And... um I mentioned Naturia Ishizu. Most of the deck is very easy to pick up because it's very, very cheap. So if you invest into Ishizu cards, which seem um, not a bad investment, they seem quite easy to splash into certain strategies that benefit from milling cards. So to pair them up together with the Naturia stuff, which is cheap as well, you just need to invest in Runic. That's going to be like an investment for the future anyway. So you have quite a good deck, a competitive deck, I would say, for this format, for the format to come. Because like, I don't think Ishizu cards are going to be hit. In my opinion, only tier stuff is getting hit. So... Overall, Runic just seems like a very smart engine to invest into. We saw Runic Sprite seeing play. So having that kind of engine seems very, very useful to me. So that would be my first suggestion. And moving on to the second one, I wanted to also mention Labyrinth. Now, um, this deck started to see popularity in OCG immediately after the ban list. And it just seems like a good investment because they're getting support in Photon Hypernova. So with the chap card, a big welcome Labyrinth, it's basically granting a special summon from the deck and other places and it just seems like a very good piece of support. I'm not that familiar with Labyrinth but from what I've seen you know videos I've watched on the topic it just seems like nice support like I said so if you want to be investing in the deck I would suggest you do so because in my opinion cards are going to go up and up and up when support is approaching especially if the deck starts doing well so if you're looking to play a very control like strategy you know just a trap heavy deck if that's your thing like i would suggest looking into labyrinth in my opinion it's like one of the best if not the best trap deck moving forward so if that's your like preference when it comes to decks it would definitely be my suggestion and since we're on the topic of decks again i'm going to talk about draco slayer i've been talking about the deck for some time now I genuinely believe when Tiri Shizu gets hit, this deck is going to be so busted. And I'm not going to be spending much time talking about it since I mentioned it in probably like every single one of my videos, like top decks to counter Ishizu, uh, top budget decks, like it's budget right now. And I don't think it's going to be for much longer. So I would suggest investing into that and just looking into what it does. It's building boards, searching Necro Valley or any other field spell that might be useful against a specific strategy. It has some very neat engines paired together with it. You're able to go for vortex for baron just there's so many different things you're able to do and um i like it a lot and i think it has so much potential and it's so cheap to invest into right now especially if you have some pendulum stuff already on hand so yeah draco slayer like just think about draco slayer even if you're not investing into it like you are going to want to know what the deck does when it gets good post tier shizu now the next also deck and um engine like all to everything all together i wanted to mention branded now um investing into bestios is nice as well like bestios just seem you know just good not just good they seem like a busted engine you might want to have on hand because they're insane hand traps they're very useful you know how good they are in this particular format but moving forward, even if Bestios are not going to have that much impact on the Tiri Shizu deck in particular, they're still nice being able to banish lights and dark monsters, and they're especially nice being paired together that actually works in tandem with them. And I'm obviously talking about Branded. Like, 
Branded is very cheap right now. The Despia side of things is cheap as well. So if you want to invest in this deck, I would highly suggest you do so. There's so many variants you're able to play, so many things you're able to do with the deck. And specifically, if you're playing this version, the Branded Bishio, like Saronir and all of these cards, they just synergize so well together. And the deck just seems like if you really learn it to perfection, there's so many niche play scenarios and just things being um, dependent on one another, depending on what plays you make. And I just think it's a deck that's like very rewarding to play if you play it well. And it just seems really fun. And it seems like post Tiri Shizu, it's going to be even better because it got sort of power crap because everybody jumped to the Tiri Shizu side of things and to tier element overall. And then, you know, nobody really played Branded Espia that much. But I still think it's very, very strong. And also, like, the most expensive card was Guardian Chimera. It has been, like, for some time. But it's insanely cheap right now. I couldn't even believe it. it's, like, 30 and something dollars, which is, like, half of what it used to be. And, um... I don't know, like, we might be getting a reprint or something. I'm not that familiar with, you know, when this is going to be reprinted, which I'm guessing it's going to be. Uh, but still, it's very, very cheap right now if you're trying to play the deck immediately or if you're trying to play it even before Tirishizu gets hit. That's also, that's that's almost better because, like I said, Bistios are just insane to counter Tirishizu. So I would highly, highly suggest looking into that deck. Now, still talking about decks, you know, Sprite, I think is, Sprite is interesting. Like, the only real hit it suffered was it, c it cannot go into Toad that easily anymore. But still, there's many different combos, and by now, you probably know a lot of them. There's just different things you can do, different boards you can end on, and it just seems like disruptions are you know very very different you have the trap card you have smashers you have the monster disruptions you have hand traps as well so there's disruptions everywhere so your opponent like they cannot side you know a back row removal dark ruler like all of that and actually want to draw a consistent hand it's not going to happen if you overside you're going to break and against decks like these where they put up different types of disruptions you really need to prioritize what you're going to be doing like post siding and it makes the matchup that much tougher and a uh, sprite overall just seems like if you really pilot it well you're almost unbeatable because if you know like every single interaction and pair that up together with the board you're establishing with hand traps you're playing i think it's a very very decent contender moving forward when it's not going to be that overwhelmed by ishizu tier and uh, it's also one of those decks that can really adapt to the format and play different types of extenders also different types of tech cards we've seen many different types of sprite over the last couple of months so most definitely I would suggest looking into that deck if you're if that's the type of deck you're into. Now we're going to mention the Kashira engine. Basically with Kashira support in Photon Hypernova, if you saw my Kashira introduction video, I go you know really into detail about everything that's coming out and how it's going to impact the deck itself because we already have Kashira cards from Darkwing Blast, but Kashira post Photon Hypernova is going to be a very, very tough contender to go up against, I think. Like, it's just very control, almost stun-like. It's utilizing cards like Shifter. You're able to lock the opponent's zones. You're able to take away their resources by banishing the cards, by banishing from the extra deck, by, you know, just putting up a rice card, which is Macrocosmos, and it's just, um, that's the type of deck you might be going for, because there's many different decks I'm suggesting in this list, I feel like, and uh, if that's your type of deck, I would suggest investing into Kashtira right now. Unicorn is going, is going up in price, and uh, it was very low, it's not that low anymore, and it's going to go even higher when the support approaches. So I would suggest like investing into Kashira as soon as possible. You might even be a bit late to do that, but still, if that's a deck you're going to be picking up post Photon Hypernova, I think it would be a good call to just do it now to invest into all of these cards. Also, investing into Fenrir by itself, I would suggest because the card is so insane. Like I play it in Jacob Slayer and um it just baffles me how good it is and how much it does for you. So if that's the only thing from the Kashira archetype you're investing into, I'm good with that. Like, I think that's great for you. You probably should be investing into those cards because they're just so, so, so good. So, um, yeah. And for the last deck I wanted to cover is Bird Up. Now, I didn't um, include it in my budget decks video and... uh. I felt a bit bad about not including it because it does seem like it's very top of Rogue or even tier 2. Yeah, but I guess I was just a bit doubtful because it did get power crept and because it also loses to Ishizu Shufflers. Like, 
hardcore. If they're taking away your resources to summon your links, you're stuck doing nothing, you know, and that, that sucks, honestly. So post tier issues, so when the format is not as overwhelmed by the shufflers and by all of that, you're much better off playing that kind of deck that got recital starting back to two, which did a lot for the deck, I think, for the initial combos, especially. And, um, yeah, it just seems like, the deck is going to be good. Um, it just took it some time. It got a bit power crept. Now it's going up again in like popularity. And, uh, I think that's nice to see. And I'm, I'm very interested to see how the deck does moving forward. And if we're actually going to be seeing some tops from it, it's nice. It can adapt like many other decks because you can play either bird up, either just brigade with other engines. Like to me, bird up just seems really strong right now. You're able to play hand traps and all of that. So, um, yeah, it seems like a very decent contender. And uh, with that, I'll be running this video off. Um, if there's anything that you learned, anything that you got away from it, let me know down in the comments. If there's anything I didn't mention and you would like to tell me, I I'm always open to any kind of conversation, any ideas you guys might have. So um, yeah, let me know in the comments. And of course, if you liked it, make sure to like it, make sure to sub and uh, check out all the social media. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.